Pretty, pretty much every service has a. You say it's a plug. You plug in the book. Yeah, yeah. sure I would, man. Why not? I mean, what other book? What other li uh, book literature do you know of that is still relevant after 400 plus years? I mean, did you still talk about? It? You can go to Walmart and buy whatever outside of the King James Bible. I don't know what you have. If you, I guess, want to go to Shakespeare, if you think that's it, nobody reads Shakespeare because they're bored, man, and they just do it. They do that for, like, uh, English assignments or whatever, uh, but to sit there and read. Have you ever, like, read Shakespeare at all? <laughs> it is. Well, you talk about oh, that King James, man. You should, try, you should try Shakespeare. Talk about dull, man. And then, then like, I try to watch a movie, like Hamlet or whatever, and it's, like, Shakespearean Tamlet and it's like I had no idea what they're saying man that English accent just throws me so anyway there's not another book like this on the face of the planet and you could say the ESV or the NIV or the New King James and whatever that's only because when you say stuff like that that's only because one you haven't proved it you haven't checked it out for yourself two you got some kind of prejudice deal. You have some kind of bias in that maybe I graduated from a certain school and that's just their official stand or whatever, so I'm going that route. But when you, the, the, the only conclusion that you would have if you had the right heart about it when it came to studying or whatnot, especially since every single Bible out there in the market takes the word study out, when you have a NIV study Bible or New King James study Bible, I find the irony you know, uh, uh, laughable in that the word, the only commandment that you have to study in the Bible is 2 Timothy 2.15 and you've taken it out. Yeah. So again, it would be like, so how would you not see the obvious other than your bias or prejudice? Uh, and, and if you don't think Christians can be biased or prejudiced or lazy, you know, you can go down a long, long laundry list with that. Then again, you you don't know Christians. I know Christians, and uh, yeah, they could be every bit as wicked and, and and dishonest and mean and bitter than any unsaved person would be, could be, or is. Brother Scott, open us up, please, sir. Amen. Amen. Alright, so look at uh, Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. And uh, verse 666, right? It will be 18. Okay. And there's a lot of talk, you know, in, in science school and in Hollywood maybe in uh, music business or whatever uh, about life in outer space and of course uh, different planets and oh well, there's so many different planets so the mathematical probability would be that uh, there's life on outer space now now again you uh, as a Christian hold on let me You as a Christian uh, have to be reminded, and you should be reminded that uh, that uh, we are, by definition, scientific, and and you need to understand that. You need to stand because this world, like you know, you, you're in this age of you know, stop bullying, whatever that term is, bullying. Back in the day, you know how you stopped the bully? You wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't. Oh, let's parade and wear a pink ribbon and write, you know. You, you punch the bully in, bully in the nose. I was bullying a kid one time in elementary school, and you know how I stopped bullying kids? 
That dude turned right around and punched me right in the nose, man, right in the mouth, actually. And blood was everywhere, and you know what? I'm like, okay. I'm cool, man. I didn't like that. But, you know, that was uh, that, was that, and that's how you stop that stuff. So, anyway, so what did I say all that? I said Isaiah, hold with one hand there, but with your second hand, go to First Timothy. Go to verse, uh, or chapter 6, look at verse uh, 17. And uh, don't let the world bully you. Uh, the, the reason why so many Christians have such a hard time with, with talking Bible to individuals, because you get that whole cliche, well, you know, we don't, I don't believe in talking politics and religion. You know, that's, I don't know why, because you have that in your constitution. You have the freedom of speech, right? That'd be your First Amendment, I think, in the Bill of Rights. And people died to preserve it, but you just, you're just not going to use that. And I'll tell you why people don't use that. Is because they're afraid. And the Bible said, the fear of man bringeth the snare. And it, it typically comes from lazy or unlearned individuals that don't want to take time to study. And, okay, well then if that's you, I would, I would say, yeah, they're, they're, you wouldn't feel comfortable getting into a conversation with somebody especially if they you already recognize that they don't believe what you say you believe so instead you're gonna let them keep running their mouth now you don't have to get violent towards them but you should you should as a ambassador ambassador you should represent jesus christ and and your bible and heaven and everything that's called christianity correct well that comes through time and effort and trial and error right and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and all that good stuff but the average Christian doesn't read Bible one, doesn't have any idea that there's a war. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Yep. Would you fight, Paul? What do you mean, there's a fight going on? What, hey, what, huh? And, uh, and that's that, you know, it's all contemporary. Let's get as close to the world as we possibly can. Preachers won't preach separation at all because they're afraid of losing their income, amen, or trusting God. Uh, for the you know increase of their ministry, so we we just just poke holes in everything that is that is holy, and oh, you let all the world back up into your church, and, and it's just nasty and, and it's not right, and uh, that's the church that you have. So like I think I said on uh, Sunday, we said uh, uh, you know either you come out or you're gonna be spewed out. There's a choice. You can learn it the easy way or the hard way, but the more you get in the Bible, you realize that there are lines there. And we've said this before. The church preaches yin-yang deal. The, the average church today is nothing more than some Buddhist temple that may say Baptist on or whatever, but the, the, the mindset of the church is it's all good. We just put the, we just spray paint or stencil Jesus on it and then good, you know? And we can do, you know, where you get the dancing and the boogie-woogie and the bumps and the grinds that you have in churches today. And, uh, you know, again, man, I, I just sometimes, sometimes, man, you just saw, see this, this ridiculous and the temptation. You know what it is, man? Just to cuss. And I know that's not right, and I won't, and it's, uh, you know, my wife will tell me, why do you bring that in? Because you get frustrated. You don't understand. I don't understand. I really don't. Other than just flesh. And you don't want to make a stand. You know, And God's given you. It's not you that's having to do a lot of that. It's everybody that's already lived and died that's done that for you. The ability for us to come in homestead and just come into a church like this, like we're doing on Wednesday night, that don't come overnight. That ability to be able to do that, liberty that you have here, that didn't happen overnight. That's from people that, that there are some serious blood, sweat, and tears that go on for us to be able to just bebop in and out of a church and come whenever we feel like it and do whatever we want to do or leave or didn't, you know, text everybody how wicked everything is and how hypocritical. Okay, well, that's why it ends up in a judgment, by the way. Your whole Christianity is summed up through fire. This is a reminder. And this is not this, but that's what that is. Look at verse 17. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Charge them that, that are rich in the wor- in this world that they be not high-minded, right? Nor trust in uncertain riches, right? And that's the typical Christian. They are high-minded about certain things, and you ought not to be. You're saved by grace, right? right. And But by the grace of God, there go I type stuff. Amen. And be mindful. Don't ever forget where you come from or God pulled you up out of that horrible pit, right? Trust in un- uh, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. So you got a you got an election coming up, and uh, I listened to Donald Trump today on the way home. He had he was up in Nevada, and you know, I I appreciate the guy, I really do, because he clearly isn't a politician. 
he's 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 all that. But as far as you as a, Bi- a Bible believer, I don't know. You, if you were claiming he's saved, I don't I don't know that that's the case. If he is, he's about as milky as any Christian you've ever seen. So before we get overly excited about the fact, you know, uh, you have your responsibility as a Christian to pray for him. Right. Okay. So I do. Yep. Okay. Uh, and you know, the Bible, Jesus Christ said, "Render under Caesar the things that are Caesar." So come, whenever this week or next week, I think it is, we'll go vote. That's Caesar. That's the way you do things. You know. So uh, you know, I got a little Trump deal. I do. I usually do wear that stuff to get people. I just to poke them, get them, shake them up a little bit, because there's hey, Americans are so soft these days. You're so you are. Stop being so soft, man. I don't know how America ever won any war based on what I see of America today. And thank God we got nuclear weapons because if we had to go down and go capture another island or something like that, you ain't going to ain't gonna happen. I don't know where you think this army is. This character, this group of people right here that spin out of spin out or whatever because their cell phone bars are down and you're all nervous and upset over all your entertainment and whatever. And, uh, anyway, so I pray for the guy. Uh, I appreciate what he stands for. I'll tell you this. The real reason why I would I would vote for a guy like Donald Trump because he's going to position himself to at least leave us alone to do what we got to do. And if you know anything about church history, the idea is not that the Christians are constantly trying to, you know, with this uh, uh, social study deal like I guess your typical Christian does nowadays and we're supposed to turn America into a Baptist church or something, whatever they got going with that. It's that you guys have always been separate from this from this world, and it's the the powers that be that 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 turn on the Christians. And you hear about throwing people to lions and, and crucifying them and and burning them at stakes. Right. The prayer would be that that you have a government in the United States. That's why the Lord talks about or Paul, I think it is, talks about living peaceably with all men type stuff, right? And and that would be that that let them do their thing in Washington and we'll do our thing in a local church. And so when you start talking separation of church and state, when these guys, these leftists want to come and tax your churches and stuff, and and you cry separation of church and state, which rightly so, you can't be hypocritical about it and then turn right back around and then go show up and want to be part of the state. Do your civic duty, whatever that is. I believe that, all right? You live peace. I, I believe that, all right? But but be very careful because what you got here with this Christianity, um, and we've said it before, you instead of the power of God on your life and the power of the Holy Spirit in, in and out of your churches, man, and, and making them a, making it a, so that it's, it makes a difference in the community, you don't have it anymore. The church doesn't have any power anymore. If, the, right. if there is, it's the exception that proves the rule, amen? And, and instead of getting right and repenting and, and, and crying out for the power and not being ashamed, we substitute it right. with careers, with politics, with whatever, saving the turtles, saving the whales and whatever. And so that's just the counterfeit. And that's, and it's, there's no power. Anyway, uh, no trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, right? Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. See that? Man, I enjoy my life. I'm glad I have a house, and I'm, well, you know, the more I get in the book, the it, the, the the less it takes to please me. Does that make sense? So I don't need a bigger nothing. I don't need a newer anything anymore. Those days, thank God, I think anyway, it, uh, you you grow out of that. It's the little kid that constantly says, "I got to have another dinosaur." Like you know, I know kids. I have, I have five of them. So they got to have another remote control. I got to have these pair of shoes. And well, I just bought you, but I got to have another pair because now the new ones came out and this guy and that guy does whatever. And the the more you get into this book, the less you're going to, and that's where Paul says, and I think First uh, Timothy 6, godliness with contentment is great gain, right? And yeah. knowing that you are setting your affections on things above, not on things not here. Because here is temporary. All right. All right. All right, uh, and he gives us all things to enjoy. Glory to God. He's given you, you know, uh, the life that you're living today. Now, verse 18. That ye do good, that uh, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute. Amen? What? I don't know. You were out there last Saturday, weren't you? Wasn't that you? Uh, you know, before uh, uh, Skyly Moon threw that at that vehicle and stuff and called that, that car, that big old pileup over there. 
And then we distributed the word there before the accident, and then we went out to the parking lot and distributed. That's what you see the word distribute? Yes, sir. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. See to communicate? Now, what is that? See, there's all sorts of things in your Bible, but if you're not in your Bible, you're not hearing it. You're not getting the message. You're just sitting there going through the robot stuff on television. And, and that's the God of this world is going to tell you all sorts of wicked things, and, and, and you're not going to be an effective Christian. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, all right, that they may lay hold on eternal life. This time to come, now to preach all day. What time? Well, the Antichrist is coming. That's, that's evident. Can't buy or sell without a mask right now. Eventually, you can't buy or sell without a mark. Right? You can't get into my school, our school, without this, this person, you know, putting a pistol thermometer looking thing right on there on that third eye type deal with that marks going. Why? What is that? That's just getting people conditioned because eventually that's how they're getting back into Walmart. The, this is just a, you understand. If there's a 99.9% .9 uh, recovery rate for this COVID deal, this Kung flu virus, then there is absolutely no reason to go through the hoops that we are now going through or have been for over almost a year now, it seems, right? And so it's, it's this lining up to get ready to what's coming. As a Bible believer, you know what's coming? It's the Antichrist. You know what happens before that? It's, it's, the, it's the rapture. You know what you're supposed to be doing prior to? You're supposed to be ready to distribute and willing to communicate. Yep. Warn them. There are the tracks. Amen. There are the signs. Yep. You got bumpers or whatever. You got some metal on your car. Put a sticker on it or put a magnet on it or whatever. And pray for opportunities, man, to be able to open your mouth. Wearing shirts. That's communication. Amen. Passing tracks out, talking to people, praying for people, and all individuals looking for open doors. Why? It's all changing. Every last piece of your reality is going to all change. Amen? Verse 19. Laying up in store for the, themselves a good foundation. Right? You read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. And unless you do that, unless you have a firm grip on what's coming, you, you're a wishy while You're double-minded. You come, you go, you're in, you're out, you're yes, you're no. This week you're on fire, next two, three weeks you're out, you know. And, and you know, it, it, uh, the little thing I saw on Facebook was, you know, be careful when you miss church because eventually you won't miss church or something like that. And that's very true. Um, this inconsistency that goes on with the church, man, I'm in one minute, I'm out one minute. All right, well, be careful with that. Again, I will say this over and over and over again, man. The only place that people are comfortable with that behavior is in church. Right. You ain't doing that at work. I promise you that. You're not doing that in school unless you got some crazy school or whatever. Fast times at Ridgemont High, man. I remember that back in the day. If that's the thing you're doing because this lack of consistency, this lack of commitment, this lack of discipline, right, that you're supposed to be having, that day's coming, man. And I don't know, sure. You just better make sure that at the end of all this, you got something to show for your, your life. Sure. What is your life? That's that Christ James. What is your life? It is but a vapor that appears for a short time or a short while and then it vanishes away. Verse 20. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Right? Everything that you've been taught, everything you've been reading, everything that you've heard in church, all the Sunday schools, all the commentaries, all the preaching, right? Uh, avoiding profane and vain babblings, right? So that's your Fox News. That's your... And I say vain... Not maybe even so much profane, but the vein that you just constantly... And I know how easy it gets, man. One video turns into two, turn, turn, two, two turns into three, and whatever. Now, before you know it, you're, you're back off the track again. And you're all getting caught up with this stuff. And it's just every, every group has that talking head. Every group has a listen to me, and they talk, and they talk, and it's vanity. Because it's not got anything to do with the, 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 the directive that you have back up to verse 18 to to distribute and willing to communicate and again i'm gonna vote donald trump and i thank god for a guy like donald trump but but, but politics ain't my deal nope. you guys man them guys with them snake uh them snake yellow snake hats and yellow snake or whatever and 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 don't tread on me or whatever they're probably not even saved you understand that right they're all drinking and cussing i saw one guy at our our school he got a big old 4x4 four four Ford Chevy, whatever that thing was, and on the back had some picture of Donald Trump, and he's Donald Trump's giving everybody the finger. And I get it. 
it's kind of I gotta jump out right there. It's kind of like what I why you do that. You stir people up, but why would you know I wouldn't do that? Why would you do that? And it's blank you, blank you. That God didn't tell you to flip people off, man. He told you to preach. So that right. same tough guy that's gonna flip people off, I guarantee you, a tough guy like that, he don't have no tracks in his glove compartment. He ain't telling nobody about Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact. Go ahead and, and run your mouth with that. If that's right. the, that, the, 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 you're going to put all your eggs in that basket, nobody's going to hear you, man, when you open your mouth about Jesus Christ because, first of all, that is the profane part. You see that? Right. All right? Avoiding profane and vain babblings. That's profane. Right. Profanity. That's where you get that from, right? Okay. okay. And oppositions of science falsely so-called, right? So that word science, and, and, and it's taken out in all your new Bibles. And yet, when you're listening to these guys talk about the Kung Flu and all the rest of that stuff, all you ever hear is the, the science, the science, the science. You ever hear it? Mm -hmm. And Trump's an idiot because he don't follow the science. Trump thinks like you do. Because right. I heard him. He said, this is too much, man. This is open up. And he got it. God gave him that. You know why I believe God gave him that? Show everybody how foolish you are, man. Because as soon as he got it, everybody in the world said the man is about to die. And, and most of those leftists and those profane and vain babblers, they all celebrated the fact. I mean, that's the difference with the left now. Be careful with that, because if you're hearing that somehow I will agree with the left because I hit the right so often, I hit the right because I know Christians, you're barking up the wrong tree. And you know what, there is a right book if you want to go that route. And that's yeah. that King James Bible. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's enough of that. Where are we at? Isaiah? 45. All right, so I said that. What did I say that for? Oh, yeah, science. So all that science stuff is about, uh, oh, yeah, scientifically speaking. Scientifically speaking, that's a, 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 a opposition to science, what I said, falsely so-called. So it's the fake news. Yep. All right, it's also a fake pandemic. Yep. I don't care how you want to slice it, man, but, they, you know, when you get the flu, you're sick, correct? Because they're going to say, oh, you don't know that. You could have had the flu, too. I know you're going to start making up all that stuff now that you did this with the COVID. But the COVID deal, COVID-19, the corona, whatever, is that you can get it, but you don't get sick from it. You're asymptomatic. But shut everything down. It's crazy, man. I thought, I thought, because remember, Scott, we said this before. We were looking because I had a choice to make. As your pastor, I mean, you know, we were pretty democratic about it. I asked you to pray, and we decided, I guess, collectively, didn't we? I won't say I guess. I'm, I know we did. That we're going to stay over, trust God. And that was when I, they were saying people were dying. But then you heard later on down the road that they were dying, but he actually had cancer. But he had COVID and cancer, but we're going to say COVID. And then they come to find out that it, there was some kind of money involved, some kind of government stimulus that if you reported cases that somehow you'd get a check for that. Well, then what, what dummy manager or CEO or COO or whatever wouldn't know to say, well, you're an accountant guy, aren't you? Are you getting into that too? Kind of. Well, your mom is, right? So she would know, check that box. Because this one comes with an extra $500. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, sure, man. And it's, it's not illegal. But that's how they're, that's, they're siding with it. And I hear it. And the numbers change all the time and whatever else. And then, okay, whatever. So Paul warned you. And that's the big theme today is it's science, 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 science. And same group that, say, group that it says you come out for monkeys. So they say, they believe that. That ain't scientific. Where'd you get that science? That's all Hollywood. Are you going to show some cartoon if you're going to try to prove it to me? Go ahead and try to prove it to me without a cartoon. Because that little deal, I was a tadpole when I began to begin. And then I was a frog with my tail tucked in. Now I'm a monkey in a banyan tree, and now after a million years, I'm a doctor with a PhD. That little thing there, that is fake. That ain't. And then when you really look at the science behind the Neanderthal guy and the Pilton man and the Nebraska guy, you know the Nebraska man? You know why they call him the Nebraska man? Because he was found in Nebraska. And then you find it, well, that was actually taken from a tooth of, uh, in the one tooth, and the guy builds the entire life of whoever, one of those guys, the, the, the Neanderthal guy. And from a tooth? And you're like, yeah, from a tooth. Oh, that, now that should be a million red flag. They come to find out that uh, as other people try to take a peek at that or start to take a peek at that, it was actually the tooth of a pig. But yeah, they still show up in your public school. And that little, that little deal with the, the men that change and now you're the guy walking or whatever, same thing. 
or it's it's it turned out to be some monkey with with arthritis over and over again and Lucy or whatever because you find 20 bones and then somehow that's it if 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 everybody in Dade County died suddenly don't you think you would find more than one person laying around somewhere you'd find if nothing else you would at least find the graveyards with all of them correct because there are graveyards everywhere well let's just say they all got what well, so where are they how come it's only you only finding one of them groups of bones and then you find the arm here and then 10 miles down the road you find the knee <laughs> talk about emotional panic man and that's science falsely so called and yet all your 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 you know your broad minded bastion of, of fundamentalism right. you're going to endorse a bible that takes all that out that warning that's a warning by the way what Paul yeah. said beware of oppositions of avoid O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. That's a charge. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Oppositions of science. Oppositions of science. Yeah. They're, they're opposing science. That's opposing science. Yeah. Right? We're scientific. We know that them little cats out there came from other cats. Amen. We may have a hard time figuring out where the dad was, but which one of them crazy cats was the dad could be. But I know that came from a cat. Okay. All right, uh, Isaiah chapter 45, look at verse 18. And thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. So God will tell you over and over again, it was me that did all that. It wasn't no big bang and the cosmic egg stuff or whatever. You can mock God all you want until your car goes out of control. I know who you're going to call out. Go get your grandma. Or you get covid Oh God, how can you let that happen? You get cancer. How can you let that happen to me? Or, you know, because you act like an animal and you get AIDS. Yep. You reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. God himself that formed the earth and made it, and he hath established it, and he created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. See that? Mm -hmm. I am the Lord, and there are, is none else. None else beside me. Right. There's only one planet that he ever references with the term inhabited. Yeah. There's only one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There's one planet that he mentioned. Now, I'll tell you it best if you ask, well, why did God make all the rest of those things? I would say that it was meant to eventually populate. You had the ability to be able to do it. Matter of fact, you know how you had the ability? Do you know that man had the ability at one point? Now, Trump was also saying he's going to put a woman on the Mars or something today. And then that guy, guy cried out, put Nancy Pelosi on Mars. Yeah. I thought that was funny. All right. Uh, Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. What are we talking about? Well, the earth, like we did last uh, We called it the sons of God and kind of branched off to that. And then, you know, there's a lot of links in your Bible, right? So you compare spiritual with spiritual. Yep. So their ability to be able to get to outer space, I mean, you still have that inside your DNA. There's a desire to want to go see what's across the street. Matter of fact, that's what got Eve in trouble. Something else out there, although God was very, very clear about your habitation was on planet Earth. The one that he formed and the one that was meant to be inhabited. The science behind planet Earth and all the rest of those, whatever you say, is out there. Because I've never been out there. And you can go ahead and just say that they know what they're talking about. But again, NASA and all these other you know, institutions, uh, is there money involved in what they do? And you can say, yes, sure there is. Is there government funding involved? Where they get the money? Well, that's all government, by the way. So it's all taxes and whatever. So yeah, i got to give you a reason why... We still need funding, right? And so they're going to come up with all sort, sorts of whatever. But, but all that being said, that whole thing with life in outer space, today, scientifically speaking, you haven't found it. it that's how the devil works, by the way. He works with smoke, some, smoke and mirrors. Yep. There's nothing there. There's nothing tangible. There's nothing scientific. It's always like the evolution. You can't see it. It's like the faith healers. It's everything that those guys that you've seen, they're always, I can hear you now. They, what, the, the, the faith healers in your Bible, the disciples and Jesus Christ, them guys, the apostolic, the book of Acts, the, the Acts of the Apostles, 
Those guys were actually able to make hands come out and raise people from the dead. Those guys, those faith healers never do that. It's always something internal. It's always something doing whatever. It's always this, that. But you never see it. But you're convinced that there's still something out there. And you go, you go out there thinking you just saw something. But the reality of it is you didn't see anything. Right. Nothing happened. But you just left like something just happened. That's called a sleight of hand, by the way. Yep. Those are what the magicians and stuff do. Those are what the tricksters and the con are. The little P deal they put under the shell. The shell deal, the shell game, or the three cards. And, All right, watch it closely. And the guy just put it in his pocket and ain't even there anymore. And you're like, well, something just happened. Yep. Nothing happened. There is no evolution. Nothing's happening, right? And the same thing with this corona deal. Amen. They keep telling you there's something happening, and then all of a sudden, nothing's happening. They, these people are getting sick, right? Well, are they? I don't know, man. You know, then you're going to have people up there, oh, I heard what you said. Well, I heard what you said. So how about that? <laughs> Dummies. Ain't no evolution going on. Where is it? Oh, it's out there. The little boy goes to school, right? He's got a science project. And he goes up before the class and he says, uh, he says, uh, up here, here's this, uh, here's this caterpillar and in three days it's going to turn into a giraffe. And then everybody's like, what, what, what? Here's a caterpillar and in three days it's going to turn into a giraffe. And they're like, oh, that's fake. Oh, teacher says, oh, go sit down. What? Yeah, you didn't read nothing. You don't know what's going on. And he said, oh, I forgot. My bad. My math was wrong. Let me... Here's a caterpillar, in 100 million years, it's going to turn into a giraffe. And then everybody claps. <laughs> he got an A. <laughs> See, this is what the devil does. This is what the, these fake news, fake all that. Now, Donald Trump doesn't own that. That's, that's Bible. God point that out to you. That's the vain babbling and all the rest yeah. of the stuff and prove all things and stuff because there's a lot of fake going on. The devil's a counterfeit. And so he's got all these different things going again. Like he's going to get you to leave like you just got something and you didn't. Just like some of them used car salesmen. Like you just got the deal of the century. And man, they just took you took you to the band. They took you, man. And they'll let you go too, by the way. And they'll call you right back. Oh, yeah, we, I called to my boss, Jerry, and he finally pulled. Now, he might get fired, but. Yeah, all right. All right, look at Genesis chapter 11. So you say all that stuff that's out there right now, what's out there? Well, what's the purpose of it if it's not inhabited? The purpose, I would tell you, would be that it was supposed to be inhabited. It's called growing room. That's why every country that you've ever read in history, they always go start here and they go there. That's what Japheth does, by the way. That's your European. Your European is the Christopher Columbus guy and the uh, uh, Lewis and Clark guys, right? And that's the John Wayne movies. And they're always going out there, creeping around. And then everybody that I'm upset over the fact that Japheth, uh, the European rather, came in and he wiped out the Indians, but that was prophetic. The Bible says after the flood that Japheth is going to, to, to inhabit the tents of Shem, by the way. He's going to enlarge himself. Anyway, so that's prophetic. And he used the word tents, by the way. That Gallagher gun put it on him, man. Anyway, that, that, uh, that smoking stuff that you have such a hard time with, you know who introduced that to you? Hi there, hey there, hey there, hold there. God loves you. All right, let's get focused there. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, and the whole earth was one language and one speech, which you're trying to do again. Now, you know God is, uh, you know the Lord's trying to get, he's going to get that back, right? Do you know that? Amen. That's Zephaniah, but I went and go all into that right now. Genesis chapter 11, but when the whole earth does it without God, there's a problem with it, right? And the whole earth was one language and a one speech, and it came, and that's where all your commercials come. We are the world, right? And then we're one, and Pepsi Cola, I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony, all right? But it's all without Jesus Christ. Verse 2, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there, and they said one to another, let us... Let wait go to rather let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime and they for mortar uh, and they said go to let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven right so every you have that in downtown wherever you got all these skyscrapers always going up right so you have the uh, you know and the Egyptian phallic symbols that look like this right. 
and that's always going up. And you have, uh, you know, I don't know how to draw that thing, that uh, in, in Paris or whatever, that kind the of tower. tower of, what is it called? The Eiffel Tower. So you always got all these big grand things going up. And then, uh, you know, and you got this bird here, all right? And you call it a rocket. Apollo, right? All right, so you always got these things going on that we're going to go up, you're going to go up, you're going to go up. The devil said, I'm going to go up. Yeah. And, and again, out of everybody, the, the, the org chart is this. God and then this guy. And then everything else. Yeah. So as powerful as he is and in control of everything that he is, he's called the God of this world. He's called that. So whose world is it? the little G God. It's the devil's. Okay. But he's always in charge. He's got it. He's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of business. But you have that desire. My point is you got this deal that you're always trying to go out there. You're always trying to go out there. It's like the cat it already knows that it's always wanting to get out. Like you got a dog always trying to get out. right? So when I go to your house, you always put them dogs inside these kettle, kennels or whatever. You're always trying to keep them contained. But there's something, in, there's something in there that wants to go. If you got a bird, you clip his wings and put him in a little cage. Go ahead and open it. He knows what I mean right with that, by the way, you bird. Man, why you got me in this little deal over here? Why you always get pushed, man? Because you open the door, you who let the door open? Your animal. Because that's in him. Inside you, you got this natural desire to make, create, build, procreate. Look at me. Look what I've done. Put your name on the things. Look at this car. Look at these inventions. Nobel Peace Prize. Oscars, right? Academy Awards and all that. You're number one. Super Bowl champion. Me, me, me. Got to get all that. It's all in you, man. And there's a desire to want to get up in there, but that ain't going to happen. You blew it, and so now you're in habita your habitation is down here on planet Earth. So that's why that thought about when Trump says we're going on Mars. You ain't going on Mars. Don't hold your breath on that one. That guy, see, and I, at the other side of me watching this man talk, he's clear he don't know any Bible, and I feel for him. He's very simple in that respect. Most Sunday school kids know way more than he does. Your kids probably know. Your kid probably more. I'm, I would guarantee, yeah. or at least come close to it, that he, they know more than he does. You can tell by the way they talk, how they bun us to the heart and mouth speak it. And he's just listening to everybody else like Nebuchadnezzar did. But Nebuchadnezzar got a hold of the right guy in Daniel, right? And you got a, right, a hold of right kids and, and Meshach, Shach, and then it changed their life. And the idea would be that you guys then too put yourself in position so that guy come around and you can influence their life. But in the meantime, man, they got all sorts of crazy whatever going on. All right, look at the look at Second Kings, Second Kings. So you have all this kind of deal like you've already the talk the talk that you have again is the sleight of hand. It's the way the devil works. The talk is that you've already established that there's life in outer space. That's the way they talk. You haven't. Now, is there life in outer space, though? I would tell you, yeah, there is. Sure is. Matter of fact, we went over that, I think, uh, in our, in our two-hour marathon last Wednesday, right? And I showed you that everywhere God created something, he always ended it with, it is good. Remember we went over that? It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Except for the second day. And the second day was his creation of the firmament. That's your outer space stuff. The reason why he, he, he said that the way he said it is because what's out there. See? So the, the movie says, uh, in space, no one can hear you scream. You're like, oh, yeah. Right. Every time they tell you, they show you pictures of what's out there and stuff. I don't know what one of those things you want to bring back and have in your house, brother, but at least the movies I've seen, I had not seen one. And even the cute ones that they say are cute, the Mandalorian thing that you want to bring into your house, it'll eat your dogs. Amen. All right, so you know, it's all, oh, and you fall in love. What the devil's been, been conditioning you through that television, those images and stuff for the last 70 years is to accept something that's grotesque and mutated as something cute. Every last science fiction movie deal and everything starting with E.T., which is the nastiest looking maggot looking thing you've ever seen in your life. But boy, you just started crying when he died. And boy, you couldn't imagine. And you've seen them evil old scientists going after this little thing. And he got stuck in the sewer. And you're like, oh, man. And his neck went, eh. Man, whatever. 
I got saved. When I got saved, man, I got a little light on some stuff, amen? But I'll tell you this. You guys keep try, trying to reach out to some. Uh, after that we're gone, when, when Thanos snaps his fingers, amen, there's stuff coming, brother. That's all Revelation chapter 6. You head out in Revelation chapter 4. For verse 1 and 2, come up here is what you're going to hear. And then you know what happens? All hell breaks loose, boy. The, the Lord says, uh, come here, let me show you this. And here comes the Antichrist, and here comes the red horse, and the black horse, and the pale horse. You know who follows the pale horse? De uh, hell. You say, it's, it's hell on earth. Not yet. Not yet. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that, that, that deal? That's coming. And you know, what he, you know what happens to all you little animals, all you individuals that are on there talking about save the whales? The whales are going to eat you. All you little dogs and stuff, according to that Bible, all them animals that are out there, they turn on you. Isn't that weird? That's man's best friend type stuff, right? Gonna eat you. Yeah. But every time they talk about these planets and different things, I would say to you, uh, I would tell you, the only time planets, planets, plural, ever shows up, I'll read it to you. I go to Second Kings so you know what you're talking about. Just, just, I don't know, read, man. Does that make sense? Read. Look at, uh, what did I say? Did I give you a chapter yet? Look at uh, 2 Kings 17. Let's start there. We ain't get into three years today. We're just going to, I know I said I would start there, but we didn't. We're going to close with 2 Kings, so I'm going to give you two chapters in 2 Kings and we'll close. Uh, let's see, let's see. Secret sins. Let me see where we should start. Look at, uh, look at, uh, all right, look at verse 11. Well, actually, it's all good, man. Let's look at 7. Let's start at 7. That's better. For so it was that the children of Israel, now, now, the microcosm of Israel. You'll see how God takes care of Israel on a national basis, amen, over and over and over again. You are a nation. Okay, so if you want to know how God deals with nations, go in the Old Testament and see how them Jews react. And when they're doing right, interestingly enough, somehow God blesses them. Yep. And they, they win their battles, they, they, they prosper, amen, God bless them with land and everything like that, right? And the minute they turn on that and they do their own thing, God curses them. God messes them up, he disperses them, and he brings all these crazy things into their lives and whatever, and a lot of that's supernatural and whatever, and he doesn't bless them, curses them. All right, so how's the United States of America doing? Okay, well, just read what these guys do. So it'll show you. And then how would you apply this to your life? Well, you're an individual. So take a look at how this is working, and you apply that to yourself as an individual, and you see how that preaches, right? See how that applies. Look at verse 7. So it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. Can you apply that to yourself on an individual basis? Oh, sure you can. You can sin all the time. Christians do it all the time. Well, Christians, once they're saved, they don't sin no more because you don't know Christians. And you got a dummy pastor, man, and doesn't know his Bible either. All right? Some Calvinist dummy head. All right. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt. So that's the type of your salvation. So you could preach this all day long. For under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, right? And walked in the statutes of the heathen, right? So what had happened? They changed their mind. And sometimes you get saved and you start going sideways with the stuff, right? Verse 7, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their, their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. So now you're, you're instead of fearing the right God, you start siding again with this old way of doing business, all right, all this pagan stuff, right, and all this, this crazy fear, the gods of CNN, gods of MSNBC, the gods of Fox News, you can go there all day long, verse 8, and they walked in the statutes of the heathen, Everything, the statutes now, those are statutes. You got governments and the way they're doing, this is how we should do all this stuff. And walked in the statutes of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. God bless you in America. The reason why America got to the point it was, man, and millions of people die and risk their lives to try to get here. Say, America's a racist country. You've never read one account, you've never seen one movie that Steven Spielberg or whatever put out that showed you people trying to sneak into Nazi Germany during 19, 1938. You never saw that. 
You never see him trying to creep in into North Korea. You never see him trying to break into Soviet Russia, man, when they're trying to, you know, breaking into gulags and stuff. Well, no, because of all the horrible things that went on with the Nazis and the communists and when the Muslims and all that, what they do in chopping heads off. Well, if America is such a racist country like the narrative states over and over and over and over again, right, which is a left perspective there, then why do people continually risk their lives trying to get to the United States of America? Nobody sneaks into Cuba, man. They don't do it. We don't want to go to Cuba? No, nah, not at all, actually. I mean, you go on vacation, all right, we'll pass some tracks out. But is that the plane right there? Oh, we ain't going far from the airport, man. We're going to go there. Whoever's right around the airport gets a track. Are they going on the other side? God didn't leave me the other side, man. Matter of fact, God only called me to the people at the airport. That's all he did, right? See, you got to be very careful. You got to watch out for that stuff. God warns you over and over. But what Christians do, they don't read their Bible. They sit in front of their phone. They sit in front of that television hour after hour after hour after hour. And there's just a bunch of blockheads, man. And then they're fearing all the wrong stuff. Guys, you're fearing the wrong stuff. You were supposed to fear me. Remember when I had brought you out? The only reason why I got you up out of Egypt because you cried and I heard you. Now I send somebody to get you up out of there. Now you're looking back at all the wickedness and stuff and all the Walmarts and Targets and, and Amazon and all the stuff and the Volkswagen dealership, man. And you, well, oh, man, I got to, well, this ministry, here don't pay no money, man. I can go back over there and get a big old house. There's consequences to that, verse 9. And the children of Israel did secretly. Is there really secrets? Man, that's what happens, man. You start, look at verse 8, get the context again. And they walked in the statutes of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And then you brought the television in. You say, well, I'm going to live out in the country because I'm going to raise my kids up right. And I don't want them being influenced by the city and all the wickedness that goes down downtown. But you brought a television in your house. Oh. Well, all that stuff, where do you think, where do you think that's coming from? The city, man. That's all Chicago, New York, Hollywood, and all that. And you say, well, we're getting way out of here. We can raise our kids. And you bought one of them in. Yeah. And now you're just exposing them to everything that you did that's turned this city that you wouldn't go to at night type deal without a pistol in your lap. Amen. And now all of a sudden you say, like, oh, yeah, but we got away from all that. And you drug it all with you. But God sees that. Verse 9. And the children of Israel did and the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And Christians do that today. See how you can apply that as to as an individual, right? You understand how that works? Okay. Because you know America does that too, though, as a whole. You can you can you can take you can get it from with the left or right, whatever you want you want. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord. Their God, and they built them high places in their cities. All right, it goes back to this. Look up on the board. Yeah. It's those things. It's that desiring you to get up high. That's re that's uh, Isaiah 14. Yeah. I'm gonna be like the Most High. I'm gonna set my throne above. I'm gonna do what I want to do when I want to do it. And the Lord, you won't because He's on the top of the org chart. You're underneath this guy. That's how it works, man. You ain't got nothing new under the sun. You ain't got nothing on God that he hadn't already seen for 6,000 years dealing with that. Yep. And he had already showed you last week, and we'll get into it as the days go on, that God had already dealt with whatever was before you. He already dealt with the devil. Lucifer, he was called. Well, all the Bibles take it out, except maybe the New King James Bible might have left it in. Verse 9, for the children of Israel did those... Uh, so, uh, did secretly those things which were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower, the tower of the watchmen, to the fenced city. And they set themselves up images. You carry one in your hand. Groves and every high hill, and everything uh, under uh, every green tree, and they uh, where they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them. And wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. You want to see God's hand move in your, your life? Yeah. Keep provoking him. You want to see the wheels fall off? You want to, see, you want to get jolt? Keep provoking him. You provoke him. He watches. He's very long-suffering, thank God. But keep on keeping on, man. Watch what he does. Yeah. He'll change your life. Put you upside down, man. Just like that. What happened? What do you mean what happened? But whoa, well, whoa, well, I don't understand. I, I, why did I get that? How come that happened to me? What did you do? Did you do right? 
Well, no. Verse 12. And they served idols. Whereof the Lord had said unto them, You shall not do this thing. He already told them, What are you doing? What you doing right now, man? Oh, I don't know. You read your Bible today? No. But you watched that, didn't you? And you were on TV, weren't you? And you listened to that, didn't you? And the Lord said, yeah. I mean, you said, yeah. And the Lord said, okay. You shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel. He'll tell you. He'll send you preachers, man, to do that. And against Judah, by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, turn ye from your evil ways. Here comes the, the message, right? Why do you go to church? Oh, you can hear it. Turn. Repent. Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I've commanded your fathers. Ain't nothing new. And that which I send to you by my servants, the prophets. Now you got preachers. Notwithstanding, they would not hear. Sound like Baptists, don't they? But harden their necks, like the necks of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. You can be a Christian and not believe in the Lord. You know that, right? You can, believe, you can be saved. Being saved is one thing. If you guys would just understand that, so many people have such a hard time getting that. It's like when you get saved, that also means you're doing right. Saved, being saved is doing right, but that doesn't mean you're right unless you do right. That's the work part. But you got a weird teaching out there that because they believe you can lose it because they're all over the map. They don't know how to write, divide the word of truth. So if you see this Christian that's drinking and cussing and hanging around and carousing, then right away to cover their own tracks, they say he or she was never saved. Demas, did he forsake Paul for this present world, he said. So Demas wasn't saved. Demas was working with Paul. I guess you'd have to say he wasn't saved. No, you just don't know how to write it, divide the word of truth. If you get that, you realize that you're capable of doing anything on any unsaved person. Verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant and he made with, uh, that he had made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them and they followed vanity. And became vain. And became vain. Oh, well, that's Christians today, right? And went after the heathen. They do that now. Have you ever listened to their music? Their Christian music? It sounds just like the stuff I was listening to when I got before I got saved, man. I knew what that music was before I got saved. I knew it was wrong. My mother even warned me against that, but but she lost. The unsaved world knew about what that Elvis Presley was doing way back when. Try to warn you. And they try to warn you against them Beatles, but you know what? You know, you just couldn't have enough. Now, now they're up, now you got Christians. It's all now the Beatles are in the church. Now you got Christians posting how great they love the they love the Beatles. The Beatles, you know what the Beatles did to your country, man? You know what kind of mysticism and all that Hindu junk that they introduced? And you you ever see them guys when they first started out? They look more like preachers than most preachers. They all wore suits and short hair, Rolling Stones, the animals. The Beatles, right? And then what happened, man? And Because you let them in the door like that. They, they were all clean cut. You let the devil in, all clean cut. And then, boy, he showed his face. And then all of a sudden, the Beatles, long hair. Now everybody and their mother was wearing their long hair, kind of ratty-looking Hindu look about them. And you know what that Bible says about hair? You know what Paul says? Long hair is a shame. It's a shame. Nature itself is supposed to reveal the fact that that long hair is a shame for a man. And you say, well, Jesus had long hair. And then you got these dummy fundamentalists. They always now they draw Jesus Christ with a crew cut. You know why the Jews Jews had long hair, man. But you know the why the Jews they were that was against nature to have long. That is against nature to have long hair for a man. Jews had long hair. You know why they did that? Because that Jew was supposed to be a peculiar people. They were supposed to look strange. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to be a, a peculiar people, man. You know what you don't want to do? You want to get all, you know why the Christians get all tatted up? Christians. You know why they get their piercings? You know why they listen to the Beatles and all that? You know why they keep doing? You know why they're all vegans and different things like that? They don't want that reproach, man. They know in their heart they're safe. They don't want that, though. They saw what happened to mom and dad. They seen what happened to the old Christians that got it in the neck at the work and how everybody made fun of them. They don't want none of that. So they go back in their shell. They go undercover right away. Oh, yeah, man. And then you got a dummy talk about, well, we play this music so we can attract the world, so we can witness to them. Chapter and verse. There are no chapter and verse. That. That's your flesh. The reason why those churches play that, that, that uh, secular music or whatever you want to call contemporary Christian music is because that's what they're listening to 
outside of church, the real, the, the secular music outside of church. And they time, so the music they play sounds just like what they were listening to before they pulled up. Yep. Except that that one has those word Jesus thrown in there every now and then. So, oh, oh, this is, oh, I like this. Still got the beat, man. Now you got the interpret dance and you got the pole. I guess pole dancing's next, I guess, in church. Oh, you think I'm kidding, man? I'm not kidding. Verse 15, and they rejected his statutes and his covenant he made with their fathers and the testimonies which they testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do unto, do like unto them, or do like them rather. Verse 16, and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. Right? Like Christian, you know, leave your Bible and made them molten images even two calves and made a grove and worship all the hosts. You know what a host is, right? Host is an army. They worship all the hosts of where? Where? That's up there. They knew all about what's up there. And you know what they did? They worshiped them. So here you got Superman. Where Superman come from? Yeah, where'd the Green Lantern come from? All them things come from down there, and they're like, "Yeah, man." We and they and way back there, according to the Scofield Reference Bible, seven hundred and twenty-one BC. You know what they're worshiping? Whatever's up there. And you know who else they worship? You see that other guy with the B B A A L? You know who that is? That's the devil. That's the sun god. That's Merry Christmas, Merry Xmas. Baal is your pagan birthday for, or Christmas is your pagan birthday for Baal. But the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they, they saw the light, they saw the cross or whatever Constantine did. So they just switch everything over. So and they name all their pagan gods. Oh, that's Joseph. Oh, that's Mary. That ain't Isis. That's Mary. That's not Diana. That's Mary right there. That ain't uh, Semiramis and Tammuz there. That's Mary and baby Jesus. And you just got to look at a little bit of research or whatever to find out that's all them heathen things and they're worshiping that virgin deal. Ain't nothing new under the sun. That's all counterfeit. And then what they'll try to do is say, oh, well, you can find the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection, and all this Egyptian stuff before Christ ever showed up. I wonder why. It almost be like there was a devil out there that understood that Bible more than you did. And the prophecies in the Old Testament, he's got to jump on you and, and already counterfeited in all them Egyptian cultures and stuff. Because you find it there. They're serving stuff, all right? Let's close with this. 2 Kings chapter 23. We'll close with this. You know what they're doing? They're worship that's Star Wars, man. They're worshiping stuff up there. You know what you're doing today? You know what kind of sheet your kids have on their bed? Star Wars. Got these creatures all up in there. You know what they're doing? See the devil, don't forget now. The first time the devil shows up in your Bible, the Lord told Moses, write this down, I ain't gonna believe it. He's a snake in the grass and he's more subtle than any beast of the field. He don't care how you worship him. He gonna slowly but surely introduce you to stuff contrary to what that Bible says, getting you to think and getting you right now. You're paying for it. How cool is that? That's like people walking around with Nike T-shirts, man. Talk about a marketing genius. Hold on, man. You're gonna get these people to pay for our advertisement for free. They're gonna advertise our product, but I, you're gonna get them to pay for it. That's what Nike is and all the rest. Uh, that's what you're doing. Adidas socks and all that stuff with the word Adidas on it. That's genius, man. Devil says, I'm going to do that with your, 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 your crew. I'm going to get belly dancers and witchcraft and Satanism all up into their house, and I'm going to get them to pay for it. So what, what's that? What is that? That's Job chapter 1 when the devil and God talk. You guys. You know what the devil's saying? I, I'll get you guys. You deep. Where, where are you Christians at there, Lord? God. Where are they at? They're down at Homestead? Oh, I'll get them. They're going to have a bill, too, every month. I'll get them to pay for it. Does the Lord see everything you do? Yeah. That's what they say. Um, I guess Christians are hoping that, that uh, the God that they're about to run into ain't the God of this Bible. All right. Uh, let's see if I wrote it right. Uh, worship. 
2 Kings chapter 23, look at verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 1. And the king said, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in the ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and keep his commandments and his testimonies and, and his statutes with uh, all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of his covenant as they're written in his book, right? So you have a Bible, all right? Do things according to how it's written in the book, right? And all the people stood to the covenant. Uh, look at verse 14. And the king commanded Hilkah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order and keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple, out of the temple. Oh, where's the, what's the temple today? You know what the temple of God is today? Yeah. Okay, so how would you apply that to you right now? To bring forth out of the temple all the vessels that were made for Baal, whatever's in your heart. You got stuff hidden in that heart of yours? Yeah. That's how that works right now. The priest, you have no priest class, but I bet you got a preacher somewhere around. Yeah. And the king commanded Hilkah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made of Baal and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. Somebody must have known some out there. Death Star, the First Order, the Jedi, the Jedi Order, right? What you call the, uh, the Siths or whatever they call them, whatever is creeping around out there. Uh, and for all the hosts of heaven, and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields, Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. So, sounds like uh, Josiah's uh, getting right here with God. Because he got rid of all this garbage that they brought into the temple. So, what happens to a Christian in 2020? Well, sounds like they're bringing the wrong stuff into the temple. And ain't this church. I know how we pray. I've heard you pray before. I mean, I get it. You know, thank you, Lord, for, you know, for, uh, for, being, for us being in the house of God. And I... But th know this, th that there is no house of God in, in the New Testament. This building is not that. Matter of fact, he doesn't dwell in a building made with hands, the Bible said. But he does dwell in you. And you are, Paul said, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And judgment must start at the house of God. That's Peter. Your house of God is you. So this Old Testament, these Jews had a physical place to worship God. You are the, you are the physical place in the New Testament. Okay. And you know what happens to Christians all the time? You keep bringing the wrong stuff into that heart of yours. And you know when them kings get it right, you know what they do? They destroy stuff. They get stuff out of there. They burn it and get it right. Otherwise, God ain't going to game in and meet with them. And you want to know why you never, you, you, it's been such a while since you feel like you had got a blessing? Well, I don't know, man. What's going on with the temple yours? The wheels been falling off? You've been losing sleep? Things been hitting the fan, have they? Well, you should probably check out what these guys are doing and maybe take a look at what Josiah did, verse 4. And the king commanded Hilkah and the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door. I like that. That could be a good job for me. I want to be a keeper of the door. To bring forth out the temple of the Lord, all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem and the fields and the Kindron and carried the ashes uh, of them unto Bethel. Now watch now. Watch what's connected to your, your planets and, and this NASA stuff. See if you can pick it out. All right, verse 5. First of all, they're worshiping these hosts, correct? Yep. Okay. All right, look at verse 5 now. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense into the high places. You got how that high place stuff keeps coming up? Okay, man, there's something to that. In the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, also that burn incense unto, here he shows up again, this Baal character. You see where it says the sun? He's the sun god. So the Seventh-day Adventists say you Christians are wrong because you go to church on Sunday. Well, you know what Sunday's named after, right? It is the sun god. But then you can tell them dummies there are no special days in the New Testament. And you ask them, well, why are you going to church on Saturn Day? Because they are on Saturday. That's Saturn. That's another god. The god of whatever. I don't know what god he is. God of milkshakes. I don't know. 
uh, on Jerusalem and also burn incense on the Baal to the sun and to the moon. It's all outer space stuff now. And to the, see that? Planets. That's the only time that ever shows up, by the way, them planets. They're worshiping stuff out there. The only time the word planet shows up in your Bible is that, what you just read here, and it's associated with the devil. And they're worshiping things, and them Jews are about to get right because whatever's out there, these guys and these priests in this temple, they were worshiping whatever. Th and you just saw the, the, the billion dollars that these, these Marvel movies just made, and everything that you saw was them going out in outer space and messing around with all sorts of weird things out there. And, of course, at the end of the day, everything's fine. Everybody's good. Lord said, I'm going to burn it all, man. I told you what I, these guys were supposed to do. They're supposed to burn it. And you know why? You know why daddy's got to come down and do it himself? Because you ain't doing it. He told you what to do. And now you ever read when them Jews get right, they burn them curious arts and stuff in the book of Acts and stuff? You ain't doing it. God's going to end this with fire, man. He's coming back with flaming fire, taking vision. Just like he told him to do with this stuff down there. And we just waffle. We, 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 we just go back and forth. The one minute we're serious and the next minute we're not. He says, uh, burned incense on the Baal, to the sun, to the moon, and to the planets. And to all the hosts of heaven. Now watch who these planets are connected with. You'd never guess. And he brought out of the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook of Kidron and burned it at the brook uh, Kidron and stamped it in small powder. So sounded like he was serious about getting right because he just didn't throw it away or send it to the pawn shop so another dummy can get addicted to whatever your, your album. They burned it. It used to be back in the day. Christians used to burn that stuff. They did with the Beatles. When John John Lennon said we're more po we're more popular than Jesus Christ, unsaved people, record stores and stuff, burned their albums, broke their albums, burned their albums. You know what the Jew was doing back then? You know what he knew to do more than just throw it away? He would burn it and destroy it and grind it up in powder. Why? It's like there's things connected to it. I don't know what to tell you. Those idols, the things that the the Gentiles sacrificed, the Bible says they sacrifice unto devils. Them idols in your house, those those Catholics that got all them deals, or the Santeria stuff, or the little, there's like almost like if there's stuff like these devil things connected to them. They're called familiar spirits. Devil don't care what you call them, man. As long as you, you can call him Jesus, he's cool with that. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. God's very straight. Neither is there salvation any other, for there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Amen. There's one door. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That was like, man, you can call me Frank, Larry, Bob, Diana, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, uh, uh, Allah, call me whatever you want. Say, it don't even exist. How about that one? You can just worship at outer space. That's what they're doing. Dumb Americans, man. Dumb Christians. This dude ground it up, stamped it into small powder, and cast the powder there upon the groves of the children of the people. And watch who shows up in verse 7. You see him? Whose house they break up? Them Sodomites. Man, I don't tell you other than Jesus Christ is coming back, and he says, watch out for two people. When, 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 when I'm ready to come back, there's two people I want you to keep an eye on. Noah and Lot. Or Lot and Noah. So you want to know when Jesus Christ is coming back? Say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead and study those two guys. You know what Noah was all about? These things falling down out of heaven, messing around with girls and stuff, messing around with animals, drowning the whole planet out. You know what's going on in Lot's day? All them sodomites, man. You know what you got going on, man? Constantly over and over, there's something coming from outer space. And you've already been conditioned to accept those things that are nasty, wicked, and unclean, and perverted, and mutations, and all these different things as something beautiful, and how cute, and whatever. And that was like, that's right. And these are Jews doing all that. Those are God's people. Oh, well, you know what you Christians are in the New Testament? You're God's people. Now, you're not replacement theology like uh, Dodo Bert Anderson and all his wicked friends and whatever. You know what all that stuff, man, is like linked to? Verse 7. And he break down all the houses of the Sodomites. That they were by the house of the Lord. 
that were by the house of the Lord, what are they doing so close to that? You say, oh, we'd never let a gay bar march or no. They'll say, I get them. They'll get. The, I'll get it to where they're gonna have sodomites in their living room. They're gonna pay for it. And you watch uh, Finding Nemo. What? Stop. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You know who that is, right? That's Dory. That's uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Degenerate. The sodomite. And you got Mulan there teaching little girls to cross dress for the right reason. As long as it's the right reason, you just dress like a man. Oh, come on, Pastor. Come on. And you sing Beauty and the Beast. Yeah? Letting a little girl fall in love with an animal, huh? Where you get that from? Them Jews did. You know how you know Jews got in trouble with that stuff? Because God had to put a law against sleeping with animals. Why you got to put a law against sleeping with animals? You've probably never seen Disney, I guess. Huh. Oh, man, I tell you, you got a great book out there. You read it. You want to talk about connecting dots. That Bible's full of areas for you to get, man. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. Look at that. Now, what you do with the stuff that, that God shows you now. Well, I'll get to that later. I, I get it. I get what he's saying. But, I, you know, we'll be gone in about 20 minutes and we ain't got to worry about it. I'll just... Pretend like that didn't say it like that. But we're going to preach on it again next week. Well, next week I might I might not be here. I have a cold. I could get the COVID. Yeah. Father, bless tonight. We do thank you for it, Lord. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, uh, uh, man, there's so much in this book of yours. And, Father, just help us. God, help us position ourselves for the right reason uh, to be able to do what needs to be done before you snap your finger, Lord, or call us up hither. And, Father, once that's done, there's just no more trying to do something for you. So help us be found diligent, Lord. Everybody that's kind of going left or right or got all these idols and wickedness in their hearts, Lord, I plead the blood on all that, Lord. I pray as a church, God, if it's whatever we're doing that's keeping this ministry from taking the next step, Lord, that you'd point it out accordingly. God, and we'd have enough courage and understanding and faith to trust in the grace that you'd give us to do whatever needs to be done to get closer to you. So we do plead the blood, Lord. Pray that you come soon now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sodomites in outer space.